have a couple of scriptures we're going to look at. If you were with us on, on um, Monday night, um, then we're going to pick up from where we left off on Monday. Um, let's go to Exodus, Exodus 3, then Exodus 20. Then we'll go to Numbers 6, then Isaiah 42 and 43. Exodus 3, then Exodus 20. Then we'll go to number 6, Isaiah 42 and 43. Just a few verses in each one. Exodus chapter 3, verse number uh, 13. person next to you doesn't have a Bible, please be kind enough to share your Bible with them. Reading the King James, and Moses said un, uh, unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am, has sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. N notice, please. Moses asked what is, he wants to know, what, what they ask what is his name. The Lord responds, I am that I am. I am have sent me unto you. Verse 15, this is my name, the Lord says, forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. Chapter 20 now. Exodus chapter 20. Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto your, you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and will bless thee. Notice the end of verse 24. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and bless thee. Now Numbers chapter 6. Verse uh, 22. The Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of of Israel, and I will bless them. They shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now, chapter 42 of Isaiah, and we'll go to 43. Just one verse in each chapter. Isaiah 42, verse number 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. I am the Lord, he said, that is my name. 
Now chapter 43, verse number 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Everyone that's called by his name, he says he created for his glory. And today, uh, this morning, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about the I am factor. The I am factor. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your grace that you bestow upon us day after day. It's of your mercies that we're not consumed because your compassion fails not. Great is your grace, great is your mercy unto us. How amazing is your grace. How we marvel, Lord, at your grace. For you to shine upon people like us. For you to care about people like us. How amazing is your grace. We are humble today, Lord, that you would bless us to be able to come into your presence and you would grant us the opportunity to be able to uh, fellowship one with the other. Now as we are at your table, open your word to us that we might know what it is that you're saying. Expound, Lord, the principles so that we'll be able to apply them to our daily lives. We give you thanks and bless you now and evermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I'd like to talk to you about the I am factor. The Israelites were uh, fond on um, name, names and on the playing uh, of names. For a, a name uh, to a Jew, uh, and as we especially read in Scripture, uh, names had to do with a, a, an association of one's birth, an experience that one had at a place, a um, prophecy um, that was to be pronounced upon an individual. To call upon the name of a person is to call upon the character, uh, the nature, the authority of that person. Uh, for the uh, name uh, of that individual, uh, it embodies uh, the embodiment of who uh, they are. So when we uh, call upon the name of the Lord, we're calling upon the nature of the Lord. We call upon the character of the Lord. We call upon the authority of the Lord. We call upon the power of the Lord, which is why not only because we are in Jesus that we pray in his name, but when we call upon the name Jesus, we're calling upon the authority, the position, the power that he holds. Brothers and sisters, Proverbs 22, verse 1 says that a good name is rather to be chosen than a, a great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And so a, a good reputation, the concept of the name was associated with reputation, is to be chosen rather than uh, to have an enormous amount of wealth and to uh, be able to have uh, grace or, or we would term it in the Old Testament, it was considered to be a loving kindness uh, or loving favor. To have the grace, uh, to have grace is better than to have uh, silver and gold. Considering the great importance that uh, Jews played on uh, names, for instance, when uh, uh, you see Jacob on his way uh, to Laban's house, and uh, he has this experience where uh, the uh, he lays down, a ladder appears as he sees this portal in heaven. He sees angels ascending and descending on that ladder, uh, and he sees the Lord at, at the top of the ladder. He awakes and calls the name of that place uh, Bethel, saying that this is the house uh, of God. When uh, he is returning from Laban's house, uh, and he wrestles with the man to the breaking of the day, uh, and uh, uh, realizing that he had uh, come in face-to-face -face encounter with God, he calls the name of that place Penuel, saying that I have seen God and lived. Uh, so for uh, a Hebrew, for a Jew, 
the concept of, of a name would embody uh, the, all of the, the essence uh, of that particular place uh, and experience that would take place there. Uh, when you see uh, Jacob uh, being born, which it tells us that he comes out uh, and uh, Esau's born first, uh, but when Jacob uh, is uh, crowning, uh, he's grabbing at the heel uh, of his brother uh, Esau. Uh, so his parents called his name uh, Jacob, uh, heel catcher, or it also means uh, deceiver or, or supplanter, uh, trickster, uh, and we would term it in, in our day uh, con artist. Uh, and so the concept uh, of the, the association with his birth, which is why, if you recall, uh, he is born grabbing his brother's heel. He's born, uh, and his parents uh, say of him upon his birth, he is a deceiver. But when he comes to the place where he calls uh, Penuel, the Lord changes his name from deceiver to Israel, saying that uh, no longer shall you be known by your previous identity, that you were a deceiver, but you shall now be called a prince with God. Not just uh, any type prince, but you are called a prince who has prevailed with God and with man and has uh, overcome. So the Lord gives him uh, a, a name change. Uh, since the Jews were so fond of, of uh, names and the association of names with persons, places, or, or things, uh, it is uh, only reasonable uh, for us to understand that as they write the uh, Old Testament and also the New Testament that they pay great importance, uh, pay great importance to names uh, of a person or a place or a thing. And when they uh, spoke of God, the concept uh, in writing the name of God was to uh, associate all of the authority, the power of who God was as they would record his name. So for the Jews, the uh, sages would say in reference to the name of God that his name is his self and his self is his name. So to speak the name of God is to call upon all that God is, all that God has, uh, his entire essence, his entire being. Brothers and sisters, uh, Paul writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 19, and this is uh, Paul's letter to Timothy, uh, and as we understand uh, this is Paul's last letter before he uh, dies. As he writes uh, this to Timothy, he says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. He says, Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's quite an interesting uh, text, uh, 2 Timothy 2.19. Uh, when he writes this, he says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God, what is this foundation? The concept of foundation there it is not a, a, a cement footing upon which a building necessarily uh, is built. Uh, when he refers to foundation, he speaks of household, he speaks of family. So Paul is saying unto Timothy that nevertheless, the household of God or the family of God stands sure. Nevertheless, the, the house of God, the family of God, uh, is on a uh, substantial foundation. What is that? Uh, it is the knowledge that God knows everyone who is his because they have his seal. What is the seal? The seal would refer to the, the name of, of God. For everyone that nameth, he says, the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity, the uh, word name is there uh, indicates uh, utters or to mention or to profess or to to call so that everyone uh, who says that they profess the name of Christ that everyone who mentions his name that everyone who utters or, or anyone who says that his name is assigned to my life they must have a stark contrast to how they have been living because they are called by his name. Brothers and sisters, so when uh, a parent would speak the name of, of a child over their life, then the concept was to speak the future of that child. It was to declare the identity of that child. Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, give us the laws of circumcision and the law of the invocation 
of a name of a child. Uh, the scripture tells us in Leviticus 12 uh, it, that a, if a woman was to have a, a male child, that she was to, uh, eight days from the life of the child, she was to bring that child to the temple. And bringing the child to the temple, she was to offer uh, unto God uh, an offering for her purification and also dedication of said child. Upon bringing that child to the Lord, um, that male child, then the invocation of the name of the child was uttered on that day. If she had a uh, female child, then the on the 14th day of the child's life, then the mother was to bring the child to the uh, temple, uh, and the utterance of the name of the child was done on that day, and her offering for her purification, as well as also the child was done on that day. Now, show you how important this is, that when they brought the child to the temple and they uttered the name of the child, there was a register in the temple that would record the life of each child and the parent of that child. Uh, so they would write in the book that uh, so-and-so is the uh, father of uh, so-and-so, which is why that when uh, Joseph and Mary in the uh, second chapter of the book of Luke. On the eighth day uh, of the life of Jesus, they would come to the temple and they would bring the appropriate sacrifices. And on that day, human lips uttered, the name of this child shall be called Jesus. And in the register in the temple, it was recorded that Joseph was the father of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this was called the register uh, of life. Hmm. And so if a child somehow would disrespect or uh, somehow uh, would bring a, uh, a heinous shame upon the family, then the parents uh, having dis disowned or disannulled the child would go to the temple and they would have the child's name scratched out. Now, that may not be much to you except when you get to Revelation. Because the Bible says whoever's name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. So the association is that every child of God, their name has been entered into a register in the heavens saying that they have been born again and that they are a child of God. But what you want to make sure of is that your name has not been blotted out of the book of life. And it's for that reason that uh, Reuben, who was the firstborn of Israel, lost his a right of being the firstborn because of uh, he how he had disrespected his father's bed. Brothers and sisters, uh, when the end of Jacob's life, Genesis 49, he brings all of his sons to him. In the 48th chapter of Genesis, what happens is this. Joseph was placed in the position of being the firstborn son because Reuben had lost his, his place because he had uh, slept with his father's concubine and exposed his father's nakedness. So he loses, loses the right of being called the firstborn. So the firstborn of his beloved wife, Rachel, that is Joseph, is given the position of firstborn. Being given the position of a firstborn, he has two sons called Ephraim and Manasseh. In the 48th chapter of the book of Genesis, what takes place is this. Uh, jo Joseph brings his two sons unto Jacob, and as he places them before uh, Jacob's knees, the scripture says that Jacob would lay his hands on them. And it's right there in that moment that he uh, adopts Ephraim and Manasseh as his own son. Which is why when you are reading the names of the sons of Israel, you will not find the name, uh, as far as tribes are concerned, you will not find the name of Joseph mentioned because Joseph is seen in Ephraim and Manasseh. And so he's seen twice because he has the position of the firstborn. Brothers and sisters, in that 48th chapter of the book of, of, of Genesis, uh, Jacob's about to die. And uh, as he is, his life is expiring, what he does, he calls each of his sons to his bed. And as he calls them to uh, his bed, what he does, he first utters out their name. And upon the utterance of their, their name, 
what he does next is uh, he begins to prophesy or to predict the future about each son. But if you'll see it, the pattern was the announcement of the name and then the prophecy of the future. So he would speak the name as to speak the identity of said child. And after speaking the, the identity of the child, he would turn around and speak the destiny of each child. Brothers and sisters, we must understand the importance of being named by the Lord. Uh, here is uh, Moses in our text today. He has uh, in the first few chapters, first two chapters of the book of, uh, of, uh, of Exodus, you'll find um, the introduction that Moses is to be born and the whole setting of the scene, that the backdrop to how he is to enter into this life and how the uh, Pharaoh who knew not Joseph began to oppress the, the people of Israel and how he had uh, put uh, an unnecessary task uh, upon them as well as also he had ordered the midwives to slay the uh, male son. But the mother of uh, Moses hid him because he was a, a, a kind and a goodly child. When it came to the point where she could no longer hide him because uh, his voice, uh, as he began to cry out, uh, was easily heard, she takes him down to the uh, river and uh, uh, waits to see what will become of him. You know the story. Pharaoh's wife takes him and brings him and makes him to be uh, her son. So, uh, you find Moses, uh, his name mean, literally means drawn out. So the concept is that he's drawn out of the river. And uh, as his name is called uh, drawn out, you must also see not only was he drawn out of the river, but the concept is also he is drawn out of, uh, uh, of the people of Israel. Being drawn out of Israel, he's placed into the Egyptian way of life and the Egyptian custom. Being placed in the uh, Egyptian life and custom, he is raised not knowing who the God of Israel is. He's immersed into the concepts of what it means to be an Egyptian. He's immersed in the concept uh, of what it means to be the next Pharaoh. Uh, his brother having raised him, but uh, she uh, shows him and reminds him, but remember, although you are there, but you're still in uh, an Israelite. He's raised to be. Egyptian. One day he sees them fighting, an Egyptian and an Israelite fighting, you know the story, and he uh, slays the uh, uh, Egyptian. It becomes known to the Pharaoh he has to uh, take off, so he ends up in the land of Midian. Being in, in Midian, uh, he has an encounter with a God that he has never known before. The bush is on fire, which brings us to the uh, third chapter of, of Exodus. Uh, and the Bible says that uh, not only was this bush on fire, it was actually an angel of God who comes and stands in this bush. Moses turns aside to see this bush that was burning but would not burn up. Now, you must understand, it was not uncommon to see bush fires in the desert. But the issue here was not the fact, the fact that the bush was burning, but that this bush did not burn up. So he turns aside to see why is this bush burning but it's not being consumed because an angel is standing in the bush. So he comes there and the angel says, take your shoes off, for the ground that you're standing on is, is holy ground. So he does so, and, and the uh, angel begins to tell him about his assignment, how he has to go back into uh, to Egypt and, and to tell Pharaoh that God said, let my people go. And that he has to uh, admonish Israel that God has sent him to be a deliverer for them. So then, uh, knowing this, he says, well, when I get there, and the people ask me, what is the name of our God? Uh, what shall I say? Who shall I say sent me? The Lord responds, I am that I am. He says, let them know that I am have sent me unto you. The cons of, of this name, I am that I am, uh, is the uh, Yahweh. Uh, it is the, the name of God that is uh, seen. Uh, we would call the equivalent of Yahweh for us is uh, Jehovah. Jehovah simply means Lord. So the Lord was saying unto them, uh, God says unto them, that my name shall be called uh, Lord. Uh, and as the Lord speaks it, he says, uh, I am, the concept of the I am is that I exist. So God was saying that, that I exist because I exist. And uh, Moses was uh, referring to God. You must see this. Moses would say that, well, he is because he is. But God is saying that I am because. 
he tells him that this is my name, he says, forever. Not only is it his name, he says, forever, he tells him this is my memorial throughout all generations. In other words, God is saying, this is how I am to be remembered as the self-existing God, the God that he is everywhere, the God that, uh, that knows all things, the God that has uh, all power. This is how I am to be known. I had not derived from anyone. I had not been made by anyone. Uh, I had not been born by anyone. I am, he says. No man has fashioned me by his hands, and, and no one has a thought of me in his mind that I am the, the author of all things. I am pure actuality. So the Lord says, this is how I am to be made known. Then he tells them, tells them, you can make an altar of earth. This is in the 20th chapter of Exodus. You make an altar of earth. Uh, he tells them, but uh, when you honor me, remember that I'm the God who talked to, to you from heaven. Uh, and you shall not make uh, with me uh, images of, of silver or images of gold, because I'm not confined in gold or confined in silver. Brothers and sisters, you must understand that the God that we serve, uh, he's larger than this building. He goes beyond uh, uh, all of our human comprehension. As a matter of fact, there is no space in the universe that God does not occupy. There is no place where you can go that God is not there. He transcends all times, all space, and all matter. So he says, but you can make an altar of earth. He said, if you, you do that and you put your offerings on it, he said, I, I, I'll come to you. Uh, not only will I come to you, but I, I'll bless you. So if you, if you decide to make an altar by which you can honor me, he says, I, I'll come there. I, I will record, please understand that. I will record my name. That is, uh, I will ensign my name in a place where, where someone will come to worship me. will ensign my name. Which brings me now to the sixth chapter of the book of Numbers. Number six, after they had begun to number all the people uh, and the Lord began to manifest himself uh, to them and, and they saw the, the fires of God. Then God tells Aaron, here's what you ought to do. Uh, I want you to bless my people. And as you bless them, say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance and give you peace. Just in case you ever wonder why I always close like that. It is the uh, priestly blessing upon the people. Now, uh, uh, understand uh, when God says this, uh, the last part of that chapter, God tells them, they shall put my name on my people, and I'll bless them. <laughs> so the concept uh, of the uh, priestly blessing is to put the name of God upon the people of God. And he says that if they'll put my name on the people, I will bless them. Now see something? Let's tie together uh, Exodus 20 and number 6. Uh, Exodus 20, God says that, that if you'll make an altar of earth, I will come to you and bless you. Then in uh, number 6, God says that if you'll bless the people in my name, you'll put my name on them and I will bless them. So wherever, name, wherever God's name is recorded, God promises that he will come to that place. And not only will he come to that place, but he will also bless that place. So wherever, wherever his name is recorded, so if his name is in this building, he promises he's going to come to this building and he'll bless this building. If his name is on your house, God promises he'll come to your house and not only will he come to your house, he will bless your house. If his name is on your life, God promises he will come to your life and not only will he come to your life, he will bless your life. Wherever his name is recorded wherever his name is recorded and so there were places buildings temples tabernacles that God had uh, issued uh, out his name there were people that God had placed his name upon brothers and sisters if we consider it for us uh, today how do we receive the name of God on our lives how is it that his name is not signed upon us? 
you'll see in the book of Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 14, and the Revela Revelation chapter 22, that the scripture says that, that there are those of God that, that he has placed his name in their forehead. He has sealed them, and they have become his own possession. Now, when you consider Revelation uh, and the markings are normally for most church people, uh, our consideration of marking is the mark of the beast. And we're, our, well, our thoughts are that the mark of the beast will be in the heads of the people and the mark of the beast will be in the hands of the people, of which is true. But please, saints, you cannot ignore the fact that three times in the text that God says he was going to put his name, his name, in the forehead of his people. So the content of the mark of the beast, brothers and sisters, uh, is actually a duplication. It's a copy of what God has done. How can you prove it? Ezekiel chapter 9, long before the Antichrist had ever come up with a system of marking his people, Ezekiel 9, God says that he was going to mark his people. In the uh, Ezekiel 9, what takes place is this. There was a man who is termed as, as the son of man. He has a pouch upon his side and a writing tablet uh, in that pouch. And there were angels who were about to go and say all the people. And the Lord says, wait a minute, don't say them yet. Why? He says, because I need to go and mark all those who belong to me. And all those who belong to me, he says, then you can't, you can't touch them, but if you go forth now and slay, you'll slay some of my people. So the Lord went through, and he began to mark those who belong to him. Well, if you tie Ezekiel 9 together with Revelation 7, 14, and 22, then the marking took place in the foreheads of his people. And we are identified with the marking is. He marked his, his name in the forehead of every individual who belonged to him, which indicated that they were his possession. How do we get the, the name of God upon us? How do we have his name signed upon our lives? Well, the name of God, brothers and sisters, comes upon us uh, through the concept of a conversion uh, experience. You must be born of the water, and you must be born of the Spirit to have his name and sign upon you. The uh, waters of baptism are equivalent to the Old Testament concept of circumcision. In the circumcision, the name of the child was invoked upon them. And as the name was invoked upon the child, the identity was upon that child. And it was to say that this child has moved from death to life. And now, brothers and sisters, we have, if, if we are born again, that was to say we are born from above. Then the name of God is invoked upon our lives. How so? When you go into the waters of baptism, you are buried with Christ in baptism unto death to rise to walk in the newness of life. So when we are buried in the waters of baptism, what we are saying is that the old lifestyle, the old man uh, has now been buried in this liquid grave. It is in the uh, symbolism of, of what Christ has done for us, uh, how he took upon our death and was buried for us. Uh, but at the same time, not only did he stay in the grave, uh, but he rose from the dead by his own accord uh, for the redemption and the salvation of all mankind. So we are Buried with Christ in baptism unto death, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Buried with, in, uh, to rise, to walk in newness of life. So a change of status takes place when we are baptized into Jesus. And so the person who administers the baptism, you got to be careful. You want to know, what are you saying when you bury me in Jesus' name? And you're going to, to bury me. I, I need to know what name you're calling over me. Why? Because the invocation of the name declares the identity of the one who's about to be born. The invocation of the name declares the destiny of the one who's about to be born. Brothers and sisters, uh, neither is there salvation, Acts 4, 12, and any other. Uh, there is no other name given among, uh, under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. So, 
the name that God chose to use in salvation was, uh, in Hebrew is called uh, Yahshua, uh, in the Greek is called uh, Isaus, uh, but in English we refer to him as Jesus. So it is the name Jesus that has been given unto men whereby God administers salvation for or deliverance for anyone who would believe in him. So when we are buried in Jesus' name, the name of Jesus is called over your life. And as the name of Jesus is called over your life, what happens is just like what happened with uh, Jacob. When Jacob wrestled with God to the breaking of the day, God changed his name. So the change of identity is a change of destiny. Man is born of a woman. He's of a few days and he's full of trouble. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. Brothers and sisters. No matter how eloquent your, your earthly name is, your destiny because of your earthly nature was hell and damnation. Now, your name can indicate uh, prince of all, uh, angel from above, uh, glorious in, in wisdom. But if you had a natural earthly birth, a man is born of a woman, he's a few days and full of trouble, and we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity and in sin, the scripture says, that our mothers conceive us. So at some point in time, if my destiny is going to be changed, I have to have a name change. Hallelujah. If uh, uh, my, my future is to be certain that I'm going to be in him, my name must be changed. And it is through the waters uh, of baptism that his, his name is invoked over my life. Hallelujah. What happens well, when you invoke the name Jesus uh, over uh, your life has been, uh, and the name Jesus has been invoked over your life, uh, it is declaring that now this is one that Jesus has saved. It is to say, he has saved this one, and this one recognizes I'm saved by Jesus. And only am I saved by Jesus. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead has now quickened my mortal body. And now the fact that he has ascended far above all principalities and powers. When he went up, because I am called by that same name, I have gone up. If you'll see that, then if he's gone up and he's ascended far above all principalities, powers, and watch this, uh, Ephesians 1 says, and every name that is named, oh, bless his name. Every name that is named, when Jesus went up, he went far above every name. Which means that uh, any entity, any being, any person, any place, any experience when Jesus ascended, uh, he transcended far above uh, anything that has a name or, or anything that has character or, or nature or power or authority or identity or destiny. And if his name is invoked on my life, then I have ascended far above all principalities, powers, uh, all, uh, anything that, that is present and anything that, that is named, I have ascended far above uh, all those things as well. Here's what happens. When this name uh, change took place, he, uh, the scripture says he has called me by his name. And if I have been called by his name, then I have, uh, he says, uh, he has created me for his glory. And he has formed me for his purpose. Hallelujah. Which means that uh, when he created me, he determined uh, ahead of time that I would bear his name. And when I would bear his name, I would bear his glory. And if I would bear his glory, I would be created for his purpose. So when his name is on my life, I have dominion now. I have power now. I have authority now. And it's, it's, it's not in my earthly name because uh, in the waters of baptism, I chose to give my name up that I might take on his name. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, 
chose to give thy name up that I might take on his name. And all the workings of the name Jesus is mine. So uh, Mark 16 says, these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils in my name. They'll speak with new tongues uh, in my name. If they take up any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But how shall it be done? It shall not be done by my earthly name. It shall be done by my new name. Right. Revelation says, to him that overcometh, he says, I, I will give a new name. To, uh, to this individual who will decide they're going to persevere, he's going to give a, a new name. Uh, if you were to equate it to the concept of the Jewish wedding, uh, the groom would uh, leaving a the bride price for uh, his bride, uh, he would uh, give his bride a white stone that would have uh, a name, uh, his name written into it. Which is to say that as she has this white stone, then she is a uh, property of someone else. Hmm. Uh, and if she's a property of someone else, then any debt that she would incur is not her own anymore. Uh, any debt that she would uh, incur uh, is because uh, uh, she has been given by a, another name. Think of this now. So... As, as the bride is out there, she's in, uh, her, 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 her groom is off somewhere else. He's building something for her. But uh, if she's incurring debt, the debt is paid for by the name of her groom. Brothers and sisters, uh, you and I, uh, he has saved us by his name. But if you'll think of him, now, while you're still in this earthly tabernacle, you see, you still keep incurring debt. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh, well, let me talk to those who are still earthly. <clears throat> for you ones who've been raptured up, this is not for you. But for the rest of us who are still earthly, there's still some debt that we keep incurring. We don't like it, but we keep incurring some debt. But there's a, a blessed assurance that we know. It says we're called by his name that he has paid my debt. Now, as Paul tells us, we don't just go and, and sin because uh, uh, we can. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid, how shall we uh, that are dead to sin live any longer therein? But because I'm called by his name, he's counting my debt. So every day that I wake up, he's speaking salvation over my life. And the more he speaks salvation over my life, the more debt-free I become. Hallelujah. So I have been saved from the power and the dominion of sin. And right now, he is saving me from the habit of sin. And I shall eventually be saved from the very presence of sin. How is that done? It is done by the name Jesus, who is my salvation. In with this, the power that you have now. Uh, Moses, uh, when he approaches God, God says, I am that I am. Moses, hallelujah. Not, I'm on this, uh, not yet having the glory encounter, would say, He is because He is. Moses would have to say, because He was not yet in the glory. He had not yet come into the third day, and he had not yet come into the seventh day. Uh, Exodus, uh, the 19th chapter and 24th chapter. These are days of the glory of God. He hadn't come into the third day, neither had he come into the seventh day. He had not come up into the glory of God. So when Moses spoke of him, Moses had to say, well, he is because he is. But when Moses got caught up in the glory, then when Moses began to speak. He was speaking as if he had the power and the voice and the authority of God. So now Moses could say, I am. 
what am I saying? Prior to salvation, you were outside of Christ. And so you were referring to him as he, what he's able to do. And you're looking at, at, at he. But brothers and sisters, when you stepped into him, you became a part of, of the body of Christ. And when you come a part of the, of the body of Christ, you take upon the, the name of Christ. And when you take upon the name of Christ, you take upon the authority of Christ. And so now when you speak out something, you speak it in the name of Jesus, the same name by which you are called and the same name that you are in. His name is inside upon your life. So see this. As the I am. No way I'm not going to get finished with this today. Uh, as, the, as the I am, all that man needed when he approached God was in the I am. The I am is equivalent to Jehovah, so he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth. He is Jehovah Shama, the God that's there. He is Jehovah Shalom, the God who is peace. He is Jehovah Mekadesh, the God who's a sanctifier. He is Jehovah uh, Sidkenu, the God who is a righteousness. We can keep going on. Uh, he is Jehovah Roha, the God who is our shepherd. Brothers and sisters, uh, as the I am, whenever man would approach the I am in his need, whatever man needed, the I am would become. I hope you get that. But I know, Shabaya, everything that man needed because God is all existent, when man approached him, God became whatever man needed. So he was Jehovah, and he associated all the other titles to show I can be whatever I choose to be without ever ceasing to be who I am. And so now, as I and you, have entered into this I am prior to the I am. We would have to say, I am weak because sin was working in you. And so since, since sin was working uh, in you, then death was working in you. And since so sin was working in you and death was working in you, not only were you weak, but you were also impoverished. And you were also uh, miserable. But now that I have entered into to Christ, I no longer have to say that I am weak because as I am in him, since he is all strength and I come to him with my weakness, I'm saying unto him, I need strength. And since he can become and is all that I need when I approach him in my weakness, he is my strength. And since so I am in him, I can barely say that I am strength. And I am strong. And if I come to him and I am impoverished, and he is uh, the all wealth, and he is uh, all riches, when I come to him and I am in him, then I can say that I am rich. If I come to him and I am in sickness, when I approach him, and because I am in him, then I can boldly declare that I am healed. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you got to understand, your position has changed now. And if your position has changed, then your mindset has to change, and your mindset uh, has to be equated to your new nature and your new name and your new character. And so, Scripture says in the book of Joel, chapter 3, uh, verse number 10, when God was about to bring retribution upon the enemies of his people. He said, tell them, let the weak say, I'm strong. And let that poor person begin to say, yeah, I am rich. Are you boasting? Absolutely. My boast is in him, for my boast shall make, uh, my soul shall make her boast in, in the Lord, and, and the humble shall hear thereof, and be glad, so I wish somebody would, would help testify with me and, and declare that uh, his greatness is over my life. Brothers and sisters, your, your nature has changed now. Sisters, your nature has changed now. Uh, you got to start talking things like, I am anointed. 
I am a king. I am above only, and I am not beneath. I am a, a lender, and I am not the borrower. I am a blessing, and I am victorious, and I am deliverance. See this? Whenever God uttered out the I am, uh, and with that I am, everything that he was came rushing to that situation. Hallelujah. And so if I am in him and he is in me, when I utter out, I am victorious. Anything that's attached to victory has to come to where I am. Are you getting this? Anything that has any type of victory at all. Uh, and since he's in the entire universe and he is victory and I am in him, when I declare that I am victorious, I don't care what the situation looks like, when I utter the I am and I am victorious, everything that's associated with victory has to come to where I am. Since last week, God's been dealing with me you know, with these concepts, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to find every day something uh, different to say about the I am uh, you know, in reference to my life and in him. I know I'm saying things like I, I'm a king. Uh, you know, uh, I am a, a, a multimillionaire. Uh, I am uh, a bank that funds the kingdom. Uh, I, I am uh, uh, the anointed uh, of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Uh, uh, you got to begin to declare the, those things uh, uh, over your life. And in spite of uh, where you are, if you are in him, your nature has changed. Whole nature has changed. So this is my nature's changed. My identity has changed. And my destiny is vastly different now. Oh, it's totally different now. <laughs> you got to be careful with it because since you are called by his name, since you're called by his name, death and life is in the power of your tongue. So when you utter out something as the I, I am, you can say I am stupid. Everything that's stupid in the universe will come to you because you are, you're uttering out I am you can keep saying if you want to, you know, no, I'm just miserable. I am uh, miserable. The I am is a state of being. So since it's a state of being, then you have become everything that misery is. And so I keep declaring I am a, I am a king. I am a king. And there may not be a, a, a physical kingdom as, as of yet that I will rule over. But I'm sure of this, the more I keep confessing that I'm a king, uh, everything that is regal about a king will become me, and I will become it. So if by chance they ever need somebody to step into the, the throne in the UK, hallelujah, I'll be more than qualified to take over. But if, if they don't ever need me uh, in that earthly kingdom, I'm sure of this, that when the Lord himself descends from heaven and he uh, comes into this earth, that he shall crown me uh, as his king uh, in the earth and I shall have territory over which I am ruling uh, and I'm only practicing right now of something that's about to come. I'm over time. Uh, I thought of something, and that's this. You know, uh, confession, confession aligns you with truth. Whatever truth that is, confession aligns you with truth. With truth that is, but prophecy speaks something that's not, and calls what's not as though it is. So. To some people, if you prophesy, prophecy might sound like a lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it's not right now. So, if I'm prophesying that I am a king, I'm not lying. I'm just speaking something that's about to come. 
it doesn't have to be in front of me right now to be. And I don't have to have any, any regal chariots for it to be. I, I have uttered it out into the, the universe. And the making of a king is becoming who I am. So my state of being is. There may be days that you don't feel quite so anointed. But if you're utter not, I am anointed by God. I am his chosen vessel. I might go through things that will often knock me down and even take the breath out of me. But brothers and sisters, if I am anointed, I am just anointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Documents if you you're sick and the fact might be by confession that you are but I have other references that go beyond my current diagnosis that says by his stripes I am hmm. so the earthly doctor might confess my natural state but my heavenly physician has said, by the fact that he is Jehovah Rapha, I just keep declaring in the position that I am in him, since he is healing and I am in him, I just keep uttering out, but I am healed and I am health. Are you hearing me? It is my state uh, of being. Come on, let's stand. Let's pray uh, this morning. And uh, oh, hallelujah. As we begin uh, this prayer, I want you to think of some things that you are and begin to con confess it uh, out of your mouth. You know, that I, I am deliverance. You know, I am a peacemaker. I am anointed by God. Yes, yes, yes. If you're a husband, I am a good husband. If you're a wife, I'm a, I'm a good wife. Just begin to utter it out of your your mouth. Father, I thank you today for your goodness, your mercy today. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your, the power that's in your word today. Thank you, Lord, for understanding the, of your principles uh, that's in your word today. Now, Father, as we are understanding more about your word and begin to apply those things uh, to our life, it is by virtue of the, of the fact that we are chosen by your name that our entire identity has been changed and has been transformed. May today, God, we begin to understand the new name by which we are called. May today we begin to understand our new identity, our new nature, our new character, our new power, our new authority, our new destiny. Father, I thank you today for what you're doing. Be exalted in the lives of your people and cause us always, Lord, to be transformed. We're going to give you praise. We're going to bless you now and evermore in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are here today and you need prayer, you need the Lord to, to um, do something in your life. You need transformation. You need the, uh, his healing power to be seen. You need salvation to, to be operative uh, in your life. Will you come? We want to pray with you. We want, we want to pray for you. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you with a love that, that, that's everlasting. There is 